Okay, as promised, we're now going to actually evaluate and get the exact value. Uh, remember, the integral from zero to two means the exact value of the Riemann sum. If I put an infinite number of rectangles underneath the graph of f of x equals 4x plus 1 from 0 to 2 uh, and, and have the widths go to 0, then we're going to get the exact area under this graph. Okay, So we're going to use right-hand endpoints. If the widths of the rectangles get infinitely thin, it doesn't matter whether you use left or right hand or midpoints. These, the error is going to get minimized to 0 anyhow. So given the choice, it's usually easier to use right endpoints. Okay, and we're gonna, the idea is we're gonna use n rectangles for now, and we're gonna eventually let n go to infinity. Remember your formula for delta x is b minus a, two minus zero divided by n in this case, so our, the width of each rectangle is two over n. Okay, now in our formula, remember our Riemann sum formula, we need to evaluate to get the height of a rectangle, we need to find a formula for, for example, the height of the first rectangle is f of c sub one, the height of the second rectangle is f of c sub two, the height of my kth rectangle is f of c sub k. <clears throat> so we need a formula for that. The c sub k values, c sub one, c sub two, c sub three, they're called sampling numbers. And because those are the ones we're gonna use to determine the heights. So if you start at zero, notice that c sub one is just zero plus delta x. c sub two is zero plus one, two delta x. And c sub three is three delta x and so forth. So it doesn't take long before you realize that c sub k would just be k times delta x, or in this case, k times two over n, which is two k over n. In general, if you're using right-hand endpoints, your formula for C sub K is A, remember A is your left endpoint, plus K times delta X. Okay. So we would start this off then. We would say, using the definition of the integral, the value of that integral is the limit as the norm goes to zero. The widths get infinitely thin the summation from one to n of f of c sub k times delta x. You want to use the definition, but remember that if the widths get infinitely thin, that means you're going to have an infinite number of rectangles. So now we're going to switch this to n going to infinity. Your c sub k was 2k over n. Your delta x was 2 over n. Remember my function was 4x plus 1. So f of something, I'm putting that in for x. Then I distributed the four. Now I'm gonna distribute the two over n. So that gives me 16k over n squared plus two over n. Remembering that when we have a sum, we can split this up and factor out constants. So 16k over n squared, I'm gonna bring out the 16 over n squared, leaving me with the summation from one to n of k. And I even like to do this, two over n, just bring that out. And what's that going to leave? It's just going to leave the summation from 1 to n of 1. Because remember, the summation from 1 to n of 1 just means you're adding 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 n times. So that's just n. We have our nice formula for the sum of the first n counting numbers, n times n plus 1 over 2. The 16 over n squared comes down. And now there's no more sums. It's just n's. We know. Uh, from our properties of limits, when n goes to infinity, if your biggest power is n squared, this limit will just be the coefficients 16 over 2. And then these guys, n's cancel out. So my total area should be 10. For this particular problem, we could have, just to confirm that that's the right result, notice that the area we were trying to find is actually just a, a trapezoid which could be broken up into a rectangle and a triangle. Um, and if you find the areas of both of those, you see that we get the same answer, 10. So um, that, that checks out that our calculus way of finding the area gives us the correct answer. But on our next problem, we're not going to be able to use geometry 
to figure it out. Okay, let's do one more here. So now we want to evaluate the Riemann sum or the integral from zero to three of x squared plus four x. Again, from zero to three, that function is positive. It's above the x-axis. So literally this will give us the area under that parabola and above the x-axis. Okay, we're gonna stick with right-hand endpoints. Your delta x, b minus a, three minus zero over n. We know c sub k is a plus k delta x. So my a is zero. k times three over n gives me three k over n. The integral is the limit as the norm goes to zero. And we're adding up the heights times the widths. Plug in your c sub k value and your delta x value. Change this to n going to infinity. And then we're just gonna do some algebra here. My function is x squared plus four x. So the c sub k is going in for both x's this time, right? Okay, I'm gonna square that out, distribute. Then I'll distribute the three over n. We have 27k squared over n cubed plus 36k over n squared. We're gonna factor out the constant, 27 over n cubed. This time I have the summation from one to n of k squared. But if you recall, we have a formula for that, right? That's n times n plus one, two n plus one over six. On the second term, take out the 36 over n squared. That leaves you with this, the summation from one to n of k, which we used that formula in the previous problem. Okay, last bit here. If you were to FOIL this all out, okay, the 20, right here, n times n plus one, two n plus one, would give you a biggest term of two n cubed. And I didn't put the rest because the denominator is six n cubed. And we know that as n goes to infinity, it's all about the biggest power of n. So my limit would come out to be the, the ratio of these coefficients, 27 times two, 54 over six plus nine. Here, I did multiply it all out, but, it, but again, we would know it's just gonna come down to the 36 over two. Add those together and I got the area being 27. Keep in mind what we've done here. It's a lot of work, but what we have inadvertently done is we have now added up the areas of an infinite number of rectangles. Pretty cool.